So I talked about phase one, the low energy terrain where viruses and cancer and chronic degenerative issues happen. When, when we re-energize phase one terrain, we go to phase two, and that's where healing crises uh, often will happen. Typically, uh, like over 3,000 cases on record of, of spontaneous remission of cancer, in every case was a phase two healing crisis crisis where there's bacterial activity. Now classically, uh, conventionally rather, this is going to be interpreted as an infection. So if you have a, a bacterial infection, but you also have cancer, and you know that over 3,000 cases of cancer have gone into complete spontaneous remission, often in, in a few days, even if it's metastatic, it's in multiple organs, it can be gone in a few days with a high fever and a bacterial infection. Do you want to cure the infection, or do you want to let your body use the infection to cure cancer? Which, which would you rather have, a bacterial infection, a high fever, or cancer? That's the choice that we have, but if we don't even have that choice if we don't understand the natural history of, of health and healing and disease. So, so phase two is there's a lot of rapid change. Typically, even within a month, people can go through phase two and then maybe beyond to phase three the, the month after. In phase one, we're, we're, we're really healing the, the deep interior of the cell, the, the nucleus, but even more importantly, the mitochondria. The nucleus isn't really where there's a whole lot of action going on. It's, it's more like the library. It's the genetic library of the cells. And every cell has the same library, but different types of cells will have different books open. So if we, if we change the environment, the conditions of growth for the cell, the environmental conditions of the cell, the cell's sensory function will send signals to the, the library, the brain, the, the nucleus of the cell. The brain doesn't decide on its own what's going on. It uses its senses to determine where it is and what's the appropriate action to take. So we change the terrain, changes the the, the epigenetics, the, the turning on and turning off of different genes. And that's the difference between expression of a disease or expression of health. But again, very importantly in, in the mitochondria, it has its own genetics. And the mito mitochondria is where we get 90% of the, the energy, the ATP energy that we get that runs the cell as the, the, the chemical, uh, the high energy phosphate bond energy that type of battery effect, but now we know that the water is also another battery. So we have these two parallel energy systems. We need to energize both of those. The water is very crucial. The water for terrain phase two, where we get these rapid healing responses, is the type of water, the ideal water to drink. It's alkaline and negatively charged, or antioxidant, because a negative charge is an electron, Antioxidant is an electron donor by definition. So if the water in our body is negatively charged, as this structured biologically living water is, is that's an electron donor. It has all these extra electrons that it can donate, and it'll, your body will use that before it breaks down, uses up vitamin C, vitamin A, vitamin E, other antioxidants, glutathione, all these crucial antioxidants that when they're used up, it takes energy or resources or to, to, to recycle, uh, or maybe you don't have the resources to recycle it, so now it's spent. And, and the vitamin antioxidants have vitamin roles be beyond their antioxidant function. So if you can preserve those vitamins for their, their uh, enzymatic cofactor functions that are also crucial to health, then, uh, then that's better. You don't want to use them as your first line of defense. Uh, so drinking water that's similar energetically to, to water cascading down a mountain, a clean mountain stream that's running over rocks and aerating and moving, that's the, the kind of energy, has the kind of energy structure of alkaline antioxidant water that we want to drink. And, and there's multiple ways of producing that at home for drinking or in your office. Uh, <clears throat> there's the micro water. Uh, units that use electrolysis, so two electrical plates, a positive and negative charge, and, and that electrical field then pulls the alkaline minerals to one side and the acid minerals to the other side. They use a semi-permeable membrane filter in between so that the, the two don't remix, and you wind up with two streams of water. You drink the alkaline water. 
the only time we've seen an issue of having to back off on, on the strength of that alkaline water is uh, sometimes with breastfeeding. If the infant stops, stops drinking the breast milk, uh, back off on the, the level of the, the power, the strength of that antioxidant water, make it a little less detoxifying because alkaline antioxidant is detoxifying as we talked about the, the layers of structured water actually pushing out the toxins and waste and acids and uh, viruses and whatever else is in the tissue that doesn't belong it just literally pushes it right into the open-ended lymph vessels to, to clear the tissue and, and that's how we move to phase three which is uh, energetically as it's measured in uh, Clinically, it's measured in the venous blood, so the, the, the waste coming from the tissues. We get a shift from the venous blood being alkaline in phase one and two to being acidic in phase three and four, where now the, we're getting tissue cleansing. We're clearing the connective tissue, which is the home of every cell. Like in the biofield test, the mesenchyme or connective tissue test that looks at the resonance of what, what's the toxicity level or, or stress level in that connective tissue that's the home of every cell. So phase one and two, we're restoring the, the energy functions and then the, the structure, and, and which includes the enzymes, which are functional structures in the cell that, that speed up the, the rates of, of, uh, of chemical reactions. Not only as you know, the, the classical model says it's a lock and key, it has to fit right in to the, the substrate and the enzyme, but it's an energetic effect where the cofactor, which is usually a vitamin or mineral, or, or maybe a couple of vitamins and minerals, those are like little, uh, kind of like little laser energy sources for a specific frequency of light. As uh, Nobel Prize winning uh, scientist, Dr. Albert St. Georgi pointed out, every vitamin, mineral, enzyme, and hormone is specifically, selectively responsive to uh, to certain frequencies of light. And these frequencies of light will activate those substances, make them 500% more active. And so when these are energized, then they serve as <coughs> the, the catalyst held by the enzyme, but it's a radiant energy, a resonant energy, that when the water structured around that enzyme is, is biologically structured, living water, it actually can resonate that light as far as the, the water structure goes. When we go from phase one and two where we're working inside the cell to phase three and four where we're now working on cleaning and energizing and repairing outside the cell, those water structures extend beyond the cell and between cells and now we have a whole community of cells working together as, as a team. That's where we see regeneration in phase three once the, the, the score on the mesenchyme test is, is lower, like you know halfway down, if it's 10, 12 versus 20, 21, that's where we see more uh, regenerative activity. And new, uh, one cell having enough energy, enough electri electrical energy on its cell membrane to make two cells that are both healthy. So it almost has to have double the energy to make half the energy be healthy for, for making two cells. And uh, in phase four, we're cleansing the connective tissue, really clearing the whole tissue, so now a whole organ can, can get back to a functional level of having its energy field intact, having its chemistry intact, having the flow of function working properly. And that's all important for the spirit to be present, to, for the consciousness to be functional. When we have the, the structured water layers, they, they form a coherence zone. There's electrons within that and uh, in these sheets, and those electrons are all very, very similar to each other. And when you have that in physics, you have, we create what's called a coherence zone, where instead of separate electrons, they now function as a field. So you have these sheets of electron energy versus electron, electron, electron. It's this sheet, this energy field. And so these sheets of electrons, the pi, pi electrons they're called, become delocalized. They form uh, what's called uh, Cooper pairs, where they can now function as a field, as a, as a single quantum. So you have this whole 
you know, let's take it at an organ level now. You have a whole organ that's functioning as a unit. The, the biocommunication is instantaneous. It's all as if it's one. And this is the goal for the body as a whole. Is, or if we take it beyond a personal level, wouldn't it be nice if the world functioned as, a, as one so we don't have conflict, wars? That's the same as what's going on inside the body on a fractal level.